welcome to the Knitting Samurai Plus One video podcast. This is episode 43. I don't know what it's called, but um, orange peanut for me. <laughs> it is the week before the Super Bowl, and that means no football, of course, in this house. But we have been watching the YouTube video for bad lip reading. That is, I don't know what it's called. Maybe I'll like it. Maybe I won't. Um, that is about, that has clips of football players and coaches. And, you know, they, like the coach is saying, you know, are you kidding? That's a crazy out. But what they sink over it or they lipped up over it is, um, I want cake. I want cake. So it's really funny. There's a the part of it is Adrian Peterson. Who knows what he's saying? But what they make lipped up over it is orange peanut for me. So we've been that's like our catchphrase around the house the past couple of weeks. Well, I don't know. We watch silly things. <laughs> um, yeah. So what what what's going on with you? It is a Thursday night and the last day of. January. I wanted to get this out to, to you to stay on my schedule of three times in a month and every 10 days or so having a new episode. Can you hear my earrings jingle? You drive me a little crazy, but I even left the earrings on. I have the scarf on, like I came home, I played with Roland. Usually I walk through the door and like my work clothes comes off, my hair goes up, my earrings come off, like the scarf, everything comes off and it's like get into my PJ comfy pants and crawl on the floor and play with him. So to record, I had to like, okay, I granted it's a linen, so who cares if it looks wrinkled, but you know, oh, don't drool on me too much. Don't get me too dirty. He did a little bit of uh, kissing on my arm, but I think I'm okay. So if you're new to the show, welcome. <laughs> I don't always start off this rambly. I'm sorry. I, again, I normally record on a week weekend during the middle of the day when it's nice and bright and sunny out so we have that light going for us but I didn't record last weekend because I made a promise and I wanted to make sure I was able to keep it before I showed my face on here again and I don't know if you can hear that noise the boys are upstairs Steve is doing tough time Steve is my husband Roland is my son if you're new to the show he's 16 months old and almost 17 yeah I might as well just say 17 months old crazy super fun and I typically have a bit of knitting chatter, and then I um, insert a segment of Roland doing some sort of crazy antics. And this past week, the antic involved Mummy and Roland, so I'll I'll slap that in right here. Thank you. to share are all the goodies that I received in the mail and they're not just for me some are for you so I have some thank yous to send out there and I really need to stop knitting what I'm working on um, so first up I want to thank Manuela who is London 1978 on Rav she sent me this adorable stitch marker Sti uh, not stitch marker well she did send stitch markers this cute little bag and then all the way from Germany, I, I, I for some for some reason assumed with a name like London that she was in London, but no, all the way from Germany, she sent me this adorable owl stitch marker. A stitch? No, <laughs> it's gonna be a fun one. <laughs> Needle gauge. There we go. So see, it's so cute, and it perfectly matches with my owl bag, which is what she made her think of me. So, and she sent some stitch markers and this really cute pin that says knit happen, so that will definitely make it on my pin bag. She sent everything in this pouch, which has been repurposed by the Roman for his markers. Um, a skein of this beautiful, beautiful, can you see the sheen on that? It's a cotton, I 
think it's bamboo. Cotton bamboo acrylic yarn called Wool Butt. <laughs> it's beautiful, this gorgeous teal black variegated color. A really sweet little card with kitties and yarn. A cool notebook, which, oh, oh yeah. And some flags, some art things with graph paper, because what budding designer doesn't need a little handy notebook with graph paper. And then a Simply Knitting magazine that came with some needles. So I think I'm going to give this away to one of you guys as a um, Dark and Stormy Knit Along prize. So thank you very much, uh, Manuela. I really appreciate that. It was super, super sweet of you to send that along. And then Nancy Knit Knack in VA, our super speed knitter who um, finished the Dark and Stormy Cal first. In like a week, I swear, she knit a sweater in a week. She knits a lot of sweaters, though, if you go over and look at her. Nancy wanted to send a prize, so she sent us um, two skeins of Malabrigo. Is it Rios? Feels? Oh, no, Malabrigo Twist in the liquid, liquid amber colorway. It is absolutely stunning. I love Malabrigo colorways. It's gorgeous, absolutely. So that's a um, US 8.5 to 11. I would say it's an Aran or a bulky weight yarn. So that's going to be a prize when we finish the Dark and Stormy Cap. So thank you very much, Nancy. And then separate, I mean, it's not really a thank you. I bought it. But this also came in the mail this week. Ah, it's my Into the World Club colorway. Um, this one is based on Van Gogh's Starry Night. Or is it Starry Starry Night? Starry Night. I'm going to guess that the word that this color is, is like starry night in German or something. Sturmenich? I don't know. But that's a fingering way. Oh, I didn't read it. It's an 80-10-10. Yeah, I'm going to have to knit this one up. I was thinking about sharing it with you guys, but I'm not going to because it's, it's, it's got cashmere in it. Everybody's favorite. So that also came in the mail. All right. So thank you, everybody. Ah, it's wonderful. <laughs> let's talk about, well, first let's talk about these socks since I would like to finish the roll I'm on. Um, and plus it makes it feel more like we're knitting together, right? Oh my god, I'm going to kill these earrings. I can't do it. I can't. I talk with my head too much, I guess. So these socks that I'm working on, using my signature US size ones, I'm not a fan, uh, trying to be, but it's just not working out. I tell you what I am a fan of, though. This is the first time that I'm sort of monogamous in my sock knitting as of late, and I have two socks on the needles at the same time. So there's no second sock syndrome. Like, I knit one to the heel, to the gusset increases on the heel, and knit the other one there, did both heels, and then knit both legs. I'm going up the cuff now. Uh, I, I split my skein in half. This is 716 zombie uh no 716 her the colorway is worse than zombie so this was a stack of zombies that's based on their colors i love this yarn um as you remember quick update on my cousin so um her son patrick was released to go home and come in every other day but home is so far away that they're actually staying in a in and in <laughs> down in Boston and so he walks around the neighborhood or walks a block or two there and they go back to the hospital every other day for checkups so Stacy and her husband have been alternating who's down in Boston and I honestly don't know how anyone would keep a job in that situation but anyway so it was her week home last week that that was my confusion so she was going back north and her husband was coming down to be with Patrick, so he's doing great. He's doing so wonderful. And Stacy is just so happy about it. So I am very happy. So I'm knitting these socks for Stacy. These are my prayer socks that I'm knitting for her. Um, and the colors, I think I alluded to it once, but I didn't actually explain. It was like it was running in my head, but the words didn't come out of my mouth. Sometimes that happens. Um, the colors are black and green. And... Patrick is super outdoorsy, and would, I bet it, his whole outf his whole wardrobe is camo. Like where other boys like sports, he likes hunting and being outside and spending time 
in the woods. And so the green kind of remind me of the camo and then black is just, you know, it goes with a lot of things. And so I could see the connection to Stacy. Like these are sort of masculine, but not really. And it just made me think of her. So these are my prayer socks for Stacy. I have to say she wears a size six. It's glorious and it socks for a size six person. So I, um, I am about two inches from done on both socks, if you could see it. It's just a two by two rib toe up construction. U.S. size ones, because I didn't say that. And the yarn is a merino, it's a superwash nylon base, so they should wear really well. And I can't wait to surprise her with them. <laughs> so that's what's on my needles. Um, yesterday was a big day at work for me, and I... Um, <laughs> We had a huge presentation. All of the district managers from across the country came in and we had to present the the spring 13 line to them. And I was super excited. I was like, oh, what am I gonna wear? I wanna make a good impression in my new job. First time talking to these people in, in this role. I've met a few of them before in my other role. But I wore my new Harvest Moon sweater with a nice brown shirt underneath and I just looked so cute. Can I say that? Is that a lot? I was just so proud of it. I sewed some beautiful um, coppery red brown colored buttons on it, the three buttons, it looks so good. I got so many compliments and one of the guys were handing around uh, one of the pocketbooks, or it's not a pocketbook, it's a handbag that's going to be in stores and I happened to mention I really liked it and he said, yeah, yeah, it's kind of earthy like you. <laughs> I was like, oh, thanks. <laughs> so, um, that, that's going on with that. Um, I'm so proud. I'm going to share a picture of me wearing it. So here you go. <laughs> when, after I finished knitting the Harvest Moon, I said I was, I knit those sleeves and then I was going to knit, I don't know, however this happened. I finished knitting the Milo and I should actually write that in my notes. The Milo is by Georgie Hollum. Um, this is, I lost my pen. I lost it. It's gone. It's, oh, oh, I can almost get it. Oh my god, they are so loud out there in the drawers. Okay, so this is a Milo. I haven't woven in my hands yet. Shame, shame, shame. Um, and I haven't blocked it, obviously. I literally cast off. I was running out of yarn and ended up using this much of a sock weight yarn <laughs> just to catch that bottom edge. So I'll weave that in. It was the closest color I had. This is knit in Cascade 220. Um, 220 super wash, but it's a heather color. Right? You've seen this before. I've talked about it. I knit the 3T 22 inch size chest for my little guy that wears 2T. Um, and then I put it on him and it was not the right move. Like, I, it was one of those, I'm smarter than the designer. I know I am. I want him to wear this for a while. So the length of the garment is really good on him, but this part in the shoulders right here is really loose. Like, I would say to here is all too big on him, and then this fits him perfectly. So I'm probably going to knit him another one. I really enjoyed knitting it. Super quick, easy knit. I used, I think, a scan and a half of Cascade 220, so that would be like 330 yards. It was a super quick, super fun knit. Highly recommend it. If you're looking for a baby sweater, vest, shower gift to knit for someone, this is, pattern is definitely worth it. She does, I want to say six, eight sizes. It comes in a super wide array of sizes, like six months up to six years or something. So. Um, it's a very versatile pattern. She gives you six different cable choices from this front panel or the front. Knit in the round. Easy, easy construction. It actually reminds me of saying easy of Elizabeth Zimmerman knitting. Like, you just go. It's fun. It's totally fun. I will be knitting another one of these for sure. So that's off my needles and finished. Not woven in. Bad, bad, bad. Got to do that. Um, also on my needles, and I'm just going to mention it because I mentioned it last time, but I really don't have any progress to show you. The Welted, Welted, Took, do, do, do. Welted Took by Melissa LeBray from Weekend Hats. I had this much cast on. 
I know. It's super exciting to see. And I'm, I'm not sure I'm even going to work on it this coming week. My focus has been pretty, pretty intense on the dark and stormy. Because I want to get that down by the end of the knit along at the 28th. So, we'll see. But this would be good to substitute in. I am knitting with this yarn that is just glorious. It is Miss Babs Yummy Shadow Sport and Sock 3-ply Superwash yarn. It is the Timberline colorway, which is a deep, deep purple-brown chocolate color. Yeah, and I've done, I think, two rows on this hat. I don't even know. I think it's a size 5 because these I cast off. We're watching the Pro Bowl, and I cast off the Milo and cast this on immediately, but didn't get very far on it, as you can see. Two rows, but maybe there'll be more, maybe there won't. I don't know. Promises, making promises makes me stress out, so I'm not going to promise to finish all my sleeves again. Uh, <laughs> the other thing I cast on, because I'm, I'm purposely avoiding what we're going to show you here. Um, the other thing I cast on out of Knitting 24-7 by Veronica Avery are the slippers, the felted slippers. Um, I cast them on. I Okay, so these are for my grandmother. I knew what I wanted to use for yarn. And I didn't bother to read the pattern. <laughs> I took the needle size suggested. It said hold yarn double. And cast on and started going. So I wanted to use shamrock. This is a great yarn for felting. 100% uh, Peruvian Highland wool from Knit Picks. It's discontinued. I have quite a bit of it in my felting bin. And I thought it would be, would be great. See, my grandmother has a purple couch and a lime green sitting chair, armchair. And I thought, oh, I will knit her these semi-dark green, lime green slippers and put a beautiful, like, rich, saturated purple around the top that'll match her couch. And she'll be so cute in her living room or putzing around in her house in her slippers. Then, as I'm knitting, I am a third, no, two-thirds of the way through the length of the foot right now. And I thought, this looks really long, so if I'm going to knit that much more, it's going to be a really long and narrow footbed, and then I'm going to felt it, and it's just seemed off to me, so I went and read. The pattern calls for holding sport weight yarn double, not worsted, almost Aran weight yarn double. So I'm going to frog this. In fact, I can frog it right now while we're talking. Um, I definitely want to use this yarn, but I think it needs to be a single strand on the bottom instead of the two strands held double. So, I promised her I would do this, so I have to knit them. <laughs> and then I got thinking about it, and we have some friends that are earthy, like me, and it would be really cute to knit them Christmas gifts, um, a pair of his and hers. So, we'll see if I can, like, you know, if I get myself there, but, yeah. Ah, there we go. So... You saw it, and now it's a part, and now it's a... Because they're held double, it's going to be a pain to sort that out. So I'm just going to set it there and deal with it later. Because the little hands have gone to bed. So, um, color affection is still on my horizon. I still have my beautiful skin sitting there looking at me, especially the deep sea jellyfish going, knit me, knit me. So, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see when I get there. But... So are you ready to see what has been the main focus of my knitting energy this week? So this, this, the lovely Dark and Stormy by Thea Coleman. Here's the back of it. It's this top-down raglan in one piece. I hope you can see those beautiful cables on mine. Oh, it's enough light to show that really well. Um, I am using Cascade 220 Heathers, not Superwash in the 2424 colorway. Yes, it is, which I'm calling like a navy brown heather. Um, this has been an exciting adventure for me this week. So as you recall last week, I said, oh, I'm knitting sleeves like crazy. I had, I think, one sleeve done, and now I have two sleeves done, or I was halfway down one. I don't know. Both my sleeves are finished, but over the course of the week, the sweater went from being, uh, a boring, hey, that's a trick that one of my coworkers taught me with your regular um, woven fabric scarves. 
you want that infinity scarf look, just tie the ends together and you can loop it. And if you have long hair, you can hide it under your hair or like this one, I was hiding it because it's so messy looking. Anyways, wear your scarfs like that. Um, yeah, let's leave this one. <laughs> Anyways, um, what am I saying? So I said I would have all my sleeves done. And I did. And it went from being like, oh, I got to slog through these sleeves and it's so boring. And so I gave myself a break and let myself do some fun knitting and worked on the body and the cables. And this is the first time I've, or this, I mean, I'm that far into the body. So I'm about six inches into the body. And I got going and I started waist decreases, which I changed what the pattern called for. I did my own uh, different set of decreases to bring it in a bit more. I didn't like how loose it was going to fit, which I'm more on that later. But as I got going, knitting the cables and working this part in here, I was just like, oh, let me knit one more row, one more row, one more row. And it totally turned into the potato chip knitting. I stayed up late at too many nights. I just didn't want to stop working on the cable section. Meanwhile, in the back of my mind, it's screaming, you told them you'd have two sleeves done. And so I forced myself to knit through the sleeves, which was like, ugh. And then once the sleeves, the sleeve, the second sleeve was done, like I would knit on the sleeve and then reward myself for doing, I don't know, six, seven rows on the sleeve and go do some more on the cable. <laughs> and that was back and forth and back and forth. And then when I finished the second one, yeah, I am going to do this. When I finished the second sleeve, I uh, was just like, oh, I'm so done with this sleeve business and started back on the body. And for some reason at that point, the, ca the cables were not interesting to me. So here you go. Here are my shorts. Sorry about that. Here are my two finished sleeves. Yay! Um, they feel a little short right now. I don't know if the I switched my bottom cable needle from the giant knit picks to a smaller to the smaller um, signature needle, and so I can't really pull it around me as well. But trust me, it's big and it fits gloriously. So um, what I want to tell you about this is that they're not supposed to meet in the middle. And you have, I'm going to have a three inch wide ribbing on there. So I got to this point and said, oh, it's going to be way too big. <laughs> so I did really drastic wasting decreases. I think the pattern calls to decrease four stitches and I ended up de decreasing 16 to get it down to what my gauge was measuring. Um, did that. I haven't started increasing out again. I'm going to knit for like three inches before I flare back out. I'm not going to go all the way back out either because the actual circumference ended up being 53 inches by the time you add in that three inch ribbing and that's just, I don't need that much extra fabric. So I want it to be closer to 48, 49 around the waist. So I've got to not, I've got to leave off. I'm going to figure out that math. <laughs> um, reverse engineering here but it's fun it's a lot of fun to knit this pattern i'm really that's it for me from this week i hope you have a great 10 days or so until we talk again enjoy what you're knitting watch downton abbey watch the super bowl and all the commercials and don't forget the puppy wool and i will catch you in about 10 days or so take care bye